We all know the importance of having fast internet these days. The speed at which data flows is crucial for any task, be it attending a meeting or simply to be able to play games online with our friends. We're going to review some adjustments you need to make to your internet on your computer and essentially to your network so that you can enjoy a better experience on any computer. The first thing we need to do is generate an internet speed test. For this you select a website. Whichever one you want to find on the internet, whichever one has been recommended is good. The best and most famous one is speedtest.net, which I'd like to work with. You just click on start and it will begin to give you all the speed, both your download and upload speed. It will also give you the ping, which is very important for games, to have a controlled ping so that makes sure there's no lag, no lag in the games. It's crucial to perform this speed test regularly, say once or twice a month. This will allow you to ensure you're at the optimum internet level and will also help you to see if you are getting the promised internet speed from your provider. The first step is to change or modify the DNS set on our computer. Often by default, our computer's maker, in this case Windows Microsoft, doesn't assign a DNS and we need to modify it to connect and speed up our internet browsing. To do this, we're going to go to the control panel and click on it. It's very straightforward if you're set up like this. Or you can arrange it by category. You're just going to switch to large icons and open what's known as the Network and Sharing Center. Then you click on Change Adapter Settings. And if you're connected via an Ethernet cable, it's the same. You just right click on it. Or if you're on a Wi Fi network like me, we'll just right click and go to Properties. It contains some data and opens this window for us. We're going to select Internet Protocol version 4 and click on Properties again. This is where we input our internet connection. All we need to do is click down here where it says use these server addresses and here we're going to enter. In this instance I'm going to put Google's which is one of the quickest and most stable. We will input 8, 8, here just 8, next 8, 8, 8, and at the bottom where it says alternative DNS server, another 8, 8, and 4, and 4. We just click here on accept and that's it, we will click on close. With this, we now have a connection through a secure server where our data isn't going to be left out there on the internet, but it's going to be encrypted and we'll have a much faster connection. In the video's description, I'll leave you with a detailed list from which you can select the DNS server you desire, for instance. This is Google's and here is a list of the fastest free and public DNS servers that you can connect to. I highly recommend the Cloud Fork, which is 1. 1. 1. You can also install it on your Android and make your cell phone connection much faster. Alright, in this step we're gonna turn off the apps running in the background. It's very easy. Let's go to the start. We'll click right here where it says settings. We'll click on it and then what we'll do is click on privacy. Once we're in privacy we're going to go to the background application section. We'll click here on this option. And I have it disabled as you can see. I don't allow any application to run in the background because that's high impact and can slow down my internet. I recommend that you review them here and select which ones you want to keep and which ones you don't. Perhaps in your favorite game you can allow it to run a download or some additional function. But in my case I don't have any enabled so I leave it up to you but I would recommend keeping them to a minimum so your internet is much faster. Let's go back and now we are going to Update and Security. Let's click on it. Then we are going to Windows Updates and we simply go to Advanced Options. After that we are going to Delivery Optimization and here we are going to disable the option to Allow Downloads from Other PCs. What are we doing here? 
By just ensuring that no one connects to our internet or using the resources of our computer from our internet, they can make downloads of any kind like Windows updates. That's simply an option that slows us down which Windows has just left turned on. Well, let's disable the Windows updates. This is also a very important step. We're going to do it here. We're going to click Start here and we're going to click Services and we're going to see this application. We click. This window opens. What we need to do is scroll down to the bottom where we'll find the Windows update. We go almost to the end and over here we can find the Windows update. We're simply going to right click on it. We're going to click Properties and what you're going to do is click here where it says Stop. You're going to click it to stop. We're going to click where it says disabled and we're going to click here to apply and accept. Next, you've already disabled Windows updates. However, to disable updates so that they don't get re-enabled, I'll leave you a complete video below to disable Windows updates and prevent them from being re-enabled. For now, we'll simply disable the option to have them on a recurring basis. But I recommend that you reopen the updates from time to time so that you don't miss something important that you need to update on your Windows. Alright, let's modify some properties of our network adapters. To do this, we're going to write Device Manager here and we'll hit Enter on this application. What we're going to do is open the Network Adapters menu. Here, be careful. If you're connected through Wi-Fi, it'll show you the name of the dual band or the adapter or the network modem that you're using. In this case, it appears here as Intel Dual Band Wireless. It's my network adapter. If you're connected via an Ethernet cable, it may appear as an Ethernet controller. What you're going to do is right-click on it. Go to Properties. You'll get this menu. The menu has to be like this so that you don't get lost. You're going to give it here wherever it's advanced options. And what we're going to do here is select. They don't seem like what large shipping adapters are to me. So that's how it translates into Spanish, but in English they can appear as Lurch Send of Lot. And all we have to do is disable them. I'm putting you an image of how they appear. For example, you're going to select what the network adapter is, and then you're going to select IPv4 and IPv6, and you're going to disable both. Subsequently, if you have what the transmit power is, you're going to bring it here to what is the maximum. We're just going to click here on accept and once we've modified these options, we're just closing. Next, we're going to modify it to only work on one IP address, on the standard one, the universal one, the one that has worked. To do this, we're going to right click on our network. It doesn't matter if it's Wi-Fi or Ethernet, you're going to hit open network and internet settings. And here we go to where it says change adapter options. Let's click. It's another way to get to this option. Just right click, go to properties and it'll open up this little window that we've already explored. We're going to scroll down and what we're going to do is disable what is the internet protocol. In other words, the IPv6. We're going to disable it. Why are we doing this? A lot of computers have these new internet protocols and not all of them work as well as they should so we're just going to operate on protocol 4 and then we're going to click here where it says accept if you have internet problems this will solve those kinds of problems if you haven't had any problems and don't think you have any kind of problems just don't disable it what I'm recommending is that you disable it and test how your internet connection fares if you notice any kind of change, you can go back and enable it. But if you notice an improvement, we're just going to keep it disabled in the final step. What we're going to do is go to what is our Windows plus R. It's to run this window, which is the command executor. We're simply going to type what is gpdt.sc. Watch out. Not all Windows 10, not all Windows 10 versions can run or open this small window. We're going to click here where it accepts and you're probably going to get this error first. Here it's misspelled. Remember to write it correctly. We're going to write it like this gpdt msc. And we're going to click here to accept it. Be careful. Not all Windows versions have enabled what is this Windows policy editor. So if your Windows version is different below, I give you a video so you can enable the policy editor, which will be the most important step of this tutorial. What we're going to do here 
is go to the computer configuration we double click and here we're going to click on administrative templates double click we're going to click where it says network double click we're going to slide and where it says QoS package scheduler double click then we click where it says limit reservable bandwidth we double click again and it will open this window here it shows us that we don't have this option configured which is to limit the reservable bandwidth by default Windows gives us a limit of 20% we're going to enable it and here where it says 80 we're simply going to change it to 0 we're going to click here where it says apply and then we click accept with this we're removing any limit that we have on our internet so that we can enjoy the 150 20 or 30 megabytes that we're paying for the internet thank you very much for reaching the end